Yeah, so I decided to take all the sweets off my drawer because, well, it's a bit messy. First of all, three celebration boxes. Don't worry though, two of them are empty, I'm not that greedy. And we've got this battered up blows box that I had to take a hike. I'm not even trying to be funny, it was like that when we bought it. It's not like it was general wear and tear. Yeah, if that doesn't speak much about the British economy, then I don't know what will. And yeah, so we got this like layout now. I might as well try and do this full time, even if I don't tend to keep most of the stuff up here. Yeah, I've got my Apple Mac laptop though. Well, hey, look at this pea shooter thing in an arcade. God, I miss being in America. Right, so the worlds, or whatever you want to call them in this game, so far have had a pretty good lineup of plants with the likes of the vital plants, clutch and some kills, handy supporters, and demolition machines. This world, not so much. Don't get me wrong, some of these plants are great, but overall the fog plants are a big step down from the rest. There's also no real theme here at all, except that a lot of the plants are only really useful in this world and a complete waste for seed slot anywhere else. Anyway, enough rambling, I'm going into Vlogspot, let's dive into this list. Bottom spot is the Sea Shroom. I know that a lot of people think the Cactus is the worst, but don't worry, we will get to that. I put Sea Shroom at the bottom because I think it is, well, how shall I put this? Useless. I use them once upon playing the first level in Fog, and then pretty much never use them again because, honestly, I don't really see the appeal behind a water exclusive Puff Shroom. By the time you get any zombies in the water, you'll have enough sun to use Puff Shrooms with lily pads. And if you don't, then the joke's on you. Also, he recharges at the speed your noun takes a dump. He also severely lacks a puff stream's backward compatibility. Yes, he can technically be used in a pool, but at the cost of 75 sun. Honestly, don't bother with this bogey coloured tribe, just use puff stream. Now we get to the cactus. The poor cactus has never risen above the satisfactory rank. She's terrible in this game, okay in the shooters, and decent but overhyped in Plant vs Zombies too. In this game, she's an expensive pea shooter that can pop balloon zombies balloons. The only reason why I put her above the sea stream is because you absolutely have to use her upon unlocking her to counter balloons, while you can easily get by without shroomy sea man. Also I'd rather use her as an anti-balloon defence while being able to tackle regular zombies from the back of the lawn than wait for the blover's long recharge time and sun cost. They will get onto that momentarily. All in all, don't bother using cactus unless balloon zombies are present as it's just a waste of 25 sun. 6. Blover this is one of those double purpose plants that are only useful in certain levels. While well, you can use it to blow fog away in every regular fog level, I tend to use plantons for this as they clear the fog permanently until they're eaten. That being said, you need two plantons to eradicate the fog, while well, Blover takes it all out in one go until it comes back, and ideally you'd be using a defensive plant around the planton, so the planton strategy is more expensive. Also, using Blover to sort out both balloon zombies and fog means you can save up on seed slots as it only requires one plant instead of using both cactus and planton. But all in all, Blover's massive buffs in the sequel is pretty much the biggest improvement a plant has undergone in the entire series. Number 5 is the Split Pea. While a modest improvement over the last three, Split Pea still suffers from having very limited utility, pretty much just being there to neutralise digger zombies. And yes, he does this job pretty well, but there are other counters to these guys, such as Potato Mine and Magnet Room. He can be used against other zombies who are protected to the front, like Screen Door and Lad Zombies, but there's much better options for this. One thing he can be used for is countering jumping zombies like Pole Vaults and Pogos, as the back head does double damage, although this will require him to be planted near the front of the lawn, so he's vulnerable to other zombies. I think at the end of the day, he's just a bit gimmicky. Into the top half of the list, and first up is Starfruit. See, here's another reason why I'm not too big on Split P. This guy did the job better, and that's kind of a recurring theme in this list. He may not be able to attack directly ahead like the Split P can, or any pea shooter for that matter, but he can take out multiple lanes and he's a great support plant for assisting with cone heads. I find he's very useful in roof levels if planted to the right of the slant, as cabbage and cone poles may struggle early on, and putting even just one star through adds a few extra shots that can sort out cone heads. And this applies for all worlds too, but obviously the plant is best used in columns. As that way he can spam the lawn with magic stars, otherwise known as one of the most slept on snacks in Britain. He's one of the few times I've actually encouraged using garlic, as the guy can force zombies away from the star fruit. Third spot goes to the plantain. While he is, in essence, a world exclusive plant, being able to see through the fog is a huge advantage to complete the world, and for a sun cost of just 25, he's very easy to use. I'm not going to say that this guy carried me through the world the first time I played this game, but. This guy carried me through the world the first time I played this game. I definitely think he's better than Blover, and as long as you have defensive plants protecting him, the world's trickiest gimmick is easily overcome. While I use plantains in the second and fifth lane, in either the fourth or fifth column from the left, other strategies can be used. 
You can even just use one of the water lanes, although one lane will still have a fog intact. And even if you plant one in both water lanes, you still have a few little annoying fog clouds. I also like how he makes a cameo on the last level of Vars Breaker, which allows you to reveal the contents of Vars surrounding him and plan out strategy. The one up spot is a pumpkin. Ooh, the Gold Ninja Vlog Spot, Shogo Mask Maker made the second best plant in the game, so it should be number one. Nope. Don't get me wrong, Pumpkin is a very good plant, and I can see why fanfare ensued when he's finally brought back to Plant vs Zombies 2, but I don't think he's quite at the top. I say that because I don't think spending 75 more sun just to take up one less tile is the best payoff, especially in its home world when sun's more difficult to obtain. What makes this plant great is that he can be used as a shield for vital utility plants. Magnetroom, Gloomshroom, Plantain, and many more and it can be used on wall and tall nuts to add even more protection. He's a top pick for last stand and survival levels for fairly obvious reasons. And if you use him with Imitator, he only gets better. Overall, he may not be number one on this list, but he's a very versatile, eco-friendly plant that will aid your defences greatly. Taking the top spot is the Magnus Room. This is more of a personal preference thing given that I ranked him as the best plant in Dark Ages in the second game, but if you're comparing them between the two games, I would probably give the original Magnus Room the slight edge, just given the amount of zombies that can easily be countered with him, while on the second game he's limited to metal headwear zombies. Sure, night zombies aren't on this game, but all stars are, as well as highly dangerous zombies like Pogo and Ladder Zombies, that committed the ultimate act of idiocy by bringing metal into a fight that has a very visible magnet in the plants' defences. And while a lot of plants in the world significantly lose their use in the player's arsenal after completing the world, Magnus Room doesn't, and the majority of levels in the game have at least one magnetic zombie. Overall, the sheer usefulness of Magnus Room gets him to the number one spot on my list. That's my list, feel free to share yours in the comments down below. Check out the rest of the series if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're new. I'm GMVS, thanks for watching.